Hello fellow ENFJs. If you want to be more well liked and understood, you got to be willing to piss people off. That is something that I have had to learn. I'm starting to realize that I'm a lot of my intros have been this really dramatic like all right, I'm about to crack open my sparkling water. <laughs> anyway, that's when you know I'm getting into something. I think that ENFJs, you guys, not only will we be more well-liked, I, I phrased that wrong. ENFJs, we will be happier if we piss people off. We will be happier. And I think that's been the hardest thing for me to learn and that's pretty much the main takeaway from this video. Like I could just end it here, honestly, but I'm gonna explain this a little bit for some of you guys who uh, think that you're skeptical of that or you're not sure how to apply it or you wanna believe it, but you're not quite sure or you're not sure what I mean by pissing people off. <sighs> to have strong preferences one way or the other is to pretty much to be a person um, and to know, to be tapped in with your own, um, you know, your own desires and your, your own preferences. And I think a lot of times FJs don't want to have preferences because what if your preferences uh, are different from reality or different from the circumstances or different from other people's preferences? Because if that were true, then you would be um, alone and misunderstood and you'd be alienated and that's not fun. And so a lot of times, especially ENFJs, we'll like shame ourselves for having those preferences that are different from the group and try and change it um, because we think we're being unreasonable or we think that we're being um, unfair. Um, last night I was really, really mad at someone that I really care about and I almost didn't let myself feel mad because I was like, I am probably being unreasonable. Like I love this person. Like I have no reason to be mad. Why would I be mad at someone that I care about this much? But oh my God, whenever I let myself actually let myself be like, no, I'm mad. Then like, it just feels so much better. And like people respect you more when you're honest about your emotions because whether or not you own up to being mad or not, people will know that you're mad, especially like, okay, you're an ENFJ, you use extroverted feeling, it's abundantly clear what emotions are coming from you and all it's gonna do is make people upset with you if you're clearly mad and you're pretending like you're not or if you clearly have a judgment of someone and you're pretending like you, you don't. So I really guys have just felt like I've been a much happier person whenever I have tried to not control my emotions, because that's essentially what it is. It's pretty much controlling my emotions. At ENFJs, we want to control our emotions so that we could be okay with pretty much every circumstance that happens to us. Um, every condition that happens, we want to be able to react with positivity and to react in a way that will be conducive to harmony and conducive to our own happiness and the happiness of those around us that we love. But the real way to get to happiness uh, internally and externally is to be fucking honest with yourself about what you're feeling and you need to, you need to own up to it and you need to like cradle your own emotions and treat your own emotions the way you would a friend's emotions. And that's like the hardest thing for ENFJs to understand. For some reason, we know how to be empathetic to other people, but not to our own emotions. That like uh, annoying ass inferior TI like knows everything that's wrong with us. I know that there are gonna be a lot of INFJs out there that relate to this and honestly ESFJs that relate to this. So you guys can just sort of pick up your own, um, you know, patterns that you see fit here like I'm talking about FE talking about mostly FE here but god damn it like it's just I just can't really explain to you how much happier of a person I've been 
the more I've been willing to own up to my feelings, even when they're uncomfortable and they cause discomfort. The more I've grown and the more I've gotten okay with this, the more I've gotten comments of people telling me that they don't see FE in my videos. But really, it's just that my TI opinion has changed about what harmony means and my system for what it means to create harmony is different. And I know that it's not gonna be sustainable harmony to pretend like I'm fine when I'm not fine. And I tend to tell people more straight up, like, I have a fear about this. I want this to happen. This is my preference. Like I tend to be very adamant about it and it literally feels like a weight lifting off my shoulders whenever I let myself do it. And a lot of ENFJs might be afraid to do this because of the people around them that they know might not understand or might run away from your life, but you have to realize that it's just, it's just like cutting off like the, it's like dead weight. Like, I don't know a better way to phrase it. It's like people that don't want you to have preferences or don't understand that you're a human being with desires and fears and things like that. They aren't the sort of people that you want to be around. You want people to be understanding of the complexities of your emotions and not just expect you to shut up and be quiet. And I think a lot of times with ENFJs, we have a hard time demanding respect from people and we just respect others and we expect that people treat people the way they want to be treated and we're like shocked that people aren't treating us with respect back because we'll be like I was treating you with respect so why weren't you treating me with respect well a lot of times people don't respect you unless you demand respect I think that a lot of times ENFJs don't show people how they want to be treated and we accept behavior that we actually aren't okay with because we don't want to cause a scene and because we want to be understanding and fair But um, you have to be understanding and fair to yourself. And if you really want to use FE to its best ability, you have to be understanding and fair to everyone involved, including you. And you have to realize that, I don't know, honestly, ENFJs can be really fucking hypocritical when it comes to being there for somebody else's emotions, but not being there to our own. We're willing to give other people chances and other people excuses, but whenever we mess up, it's like, no, like we're not okay with that. And I think that if we, you know the phrase of like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. I think that that was definitely invented by an EFJ. And I think that ENFJs, we tend to want to live by this. We don't want to say anything that's gonna hurt someone's feelings. But like, the difference is that definitely don't say anything that has no purpose and that is just gonna hurt someone's feelings. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't share your emotions and your opinions just because it might piss someone off. Because those are your emotions and your opinions and you have the right to share them because they're yours. So, I think that really what that phrase means, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. What it really means is like, don't like criticize people for no reason. And like, don't um, be a dick. I mean, but you aren't being an asshole just for having emotions that might conflict with somebody else's. You just have to accept yourself that you have emotions. And I know that you might be thinking that, why would a feeler be dealing with this issue of not understanding that they have emotions? Um, yeah, it's because we have FI ignoring. It's We have almost the same sort of problem as an ESTP and an ENTP might have with their um, FI blind spot. It's similar because they're blind to it, but we ignore it. And so it's kind of kind of similar, honestly. Like, I don't, I ignore the fact, ENFJs ignore the fact that we have personal feelings with our own personal um preference for things because whenever people have preferences for things that's when kind of like war happens and disagreements happen and it's just a whole mess that a lot of times ENFJs are like 
why does there need to be that mess? Why can't we just all find common ground? But the only way to find common ground is to put your truth out there and your um, preferences out there so that then everything's on the table. We can all work with it and we can all find mutual benefit with those preferences. But if you pretend like you don't have a preference, you're never gonna find mutual benefit. You're never gonna be happy. Your emotions have to be a part of the equation. You cannot pretend like they don't exist or they aren't a part of the equation. You can't just hope that they're gonna go away because they're not. And I think that I have been more respected the more that I have been willing to rattle some feathers, as, you, as some might say. Or, um, I don't know, like, share things that might be unpopular. Like, not, and I would never intentionally say anything that is just to ruffle feathers or I said I realized I mixed a metaphor earlier but I would never intentionally say something just to hurt someone but if my emotions by virtue of being my emotions and ha being specific to me make someone else feel bad then that's not my fault and I need to stop feeling bad about that and ENFJs you need to stop feeling bad about that you cannot you should not apologize for being a, hu a breathing human that has preferences. So it's really not something to be afraid of. Some of you got some of you might lose some friends in, when you do this, uh, but you'll gain more respect even from the people that supposedly hate you. They will respect you more if you can stand true to something, if you can be honest about something, and if you are something, because. ENFJs, we, like I said, like everyone has preferences and stuff. We are a person that has, you know, preferences and desires, but, and we know that, um, even if other people don't know that. But when people just first meet us, they might just see us as nice and unassuming and honestly someone that they could take advantage of. They don't see those emotions that we have sometimes because we're so busy trying to smooth it over and trying to find mutual understanding that sometimes people can misperceive that as us being someone that is willing to put somebody else's emotions above our own. And sometimes that's true. Sometimes ENFJs do do that and we do put our other people's emotions above our own. But sometimes we are trying to find mutual benefit with ours and theirs, but that since we don't share ours, then people don't know that our emotions exist. And so they just stomp over them and then we're like, how dare you do that? Like, why didn't you realize that I'm a sensitive person? And it's like, they realize that you're sensitive maybe, but like, if, unless you share clearly like what your preferences are and what your emotions are, then people feel like, okay, well, if you didn't say that you had those emotions then why should I have to, you know, look, uh, look, or look out for them, you know? And I think it's F-E that looks out for other people's emotions. And, you know, especially people with T-E, like, especially like a T-J might just bulldoze over you by accident without, without knowing. Or, or a T-P might honestly see you as weak and see you as someone that they can, like, out-compete or something. Um, we're just not going to win. We're not going to get harmony if we aren't happy. And, like, our happiness is really fucking important. And you have to take it seriously. Like, you have to... Put it out there as part of the collective that we are trying to fix or even if that pisses some people off and if anyone is going through this journey you're an enfj and you need someone to talk to about it please comment below let me know what that's like for you if you're going through this journey of trying to uh you know embody yourself and you know piss some people off along the way not not on purpose but just by nature of being yourself because the thing is, is if you have a preference then there are going to be people that disagree that have the opposite preference and i think fi users know that inherently but for us it's hard like it's hard for us to know that because like sometimes it's so not our fault sometimes we just are one way and other people dislike what we are and it's not our fault that that's what we are and it's not their fault that that's what they are so, yeah, you're, you're an important part of the collective emotions and you need to be focused on yours in order to really be understanding of the collective. And um, I'd like to know where you're at on this journey, other ENFJs that are, um, you know, trying to share more of themselves and be more honest about their, 
their emotions and might become a more disagreeable person because of it. So anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Please join my Facebook group uh, below, Personality Typology for Self-Growth. I also just launched a Cognitive Function cognitive functions study group on Facebook too. That's $10 an hour for people that are an hour, $10 a month is what I'm trying to say. Uh, for people that are really wanting to dive in and learn from me personally and ask me personal questions and stuff like that. And I also have one-on-one -on -one options. All of that's linked below. Uh, but really I'm just here to cause discussion and I really just want to hear from you guys in the comments. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this and have a wonderful day.